Good evening, everybody. My name is Jim Dobbins. I'm running for State Rep District 69, which is the southwest corner of Pinellas County. It's kind of this almost Frankensteinian mishmash of a whole bunch of previous, well, three previous districts. District 54, the southern half, which was Jim Frisch's old district on the beach, combined with uh, 50 parts of 51, which was Larry Ahern's old district before he's heading up to 66, and then 53, which is uh, Rick Kreisman. And I guess all of us Republicans scared Rick Kreisman right out of the seat because he, <laughs> he's not running again, so that was good news. But the, the good news there is that, real quick, the, um, yeah, it was, um, let's see, uh, Pete and Sully were just saying that you guys are doing the whole PCREC paperwork thing, which is fantastic. If you want to go to a website with all the details on it, restoreourparty.com. So www.restoreourparty.com. And then tomorrow afternoon at 5.15, I'll be on the radio talking about this very same topic, talking about the PCREC and all that uh, on channel, it's on 11.10 a.m. So that's tomorrow at 5.15 on 11.10 a.m. Uh, it's uh, the Glenn Pab Show. All right, great. Well, real quick, I'll do a real quick bio, and then we'll get into the, uh, the fun stuff, which is positions, policy, you know, all that good stuff that we all enjoy so much. So I was, I've been in uh, Florida for about 20 years. I moved down here from Illinois. And as you can tell from my strong southern accent, I was actually born in North Carolina. I was in North and South Carolina and then Maryland. My dad worked for the federal government for a long time. Uh, he worked for uh, NASA and all that, so we uh, went around the country and had a good time and used to sneak in during the, uh, not during the Apollo launches, but some satellite launches. That was a lot of fun. Okay, so I've been down here about 20 years. My background is as a computer techie guy. So, as you might imagine, uh, being an IT techie guy, I've always been into problem solving. So any time I hear any kind of uh, problem coming up, I'm not sitting there focusing on dwelling on the problem side of it. I'm always trying to figure out how do you solve it and get on to the more fun stuff in life. So I've gone from uh, working on individual PCs and, and user training and stuff like that up to Fortune 500 companies. I've, uh, over the years, I've been in charge of multi-million dollar contracts and budgets and renegotiated some of those uh, contracts and budgets because I, I, let me back up real quick. Back in the mid 90s, I was working for a company and I had to spend $2 million in about six months in order to buy a bunch of IT stuff. So I looked at the list of everything and the pricing that the purchasing department came up with. And I was looking at the prices line by line as like, boy, this, you know, the company I was working for had 80,000 people working for them. So big, huge operation, IT, all that good stuff. And I looked at it as like, I can do better than this. So I went back through that $2 million budget, was able to shave, three days later, we shaved off about a quarter million dollars off that budget. So I kind of have a, a instinct, instinct for being a tightwad. And if any of you have ever seen me driving around in my minivan, you'll agree. <laughs> it's the blue minivan out in the parking lot with the rust accents. So, but I haven't had a car payment in probably, I don't know, 20 years, so that's why I like to do things. Okay, great. So that's a bio. So I'm a tightwad. I'm a techie. I also uh, wear one of three hats. I've worked on a lot of political campaigns, probably 35 or 40 over the last 10 years. A lot of times I work on, most of the time I work on uh, underdogs because I, I enjoy the challenge, you know, rather than working with the odds on favorite candidates, although those, some, those are nice too. So, uh, and then the other hat that I wear is as a, I work on TV and movie productions. And I supply uh, movie props, TV props to these different uh, TV shows, movies and whatnot. Working on one for next year, which is coming out. It's the, uh, for the JFK 50th anniversary of the assassination. Hard to believe it's been 50 years since all that happened. Yeah, mm. so that'll, that'll be on the History Channel or A&E, something like that. So when that comes out, maybe we can have a little red carpet thing over here. That might be mm. kind of fun. Mm. Okay, policies and positions. Uh, right wing <coughs> to the right of Attila the Hun. <laughs> he, was, he was kind of a softy, you know, back, back in those days. So. Uh, and, and I know this, oh, one oh, I forgot at the beginning. I wanted to say thank you uh, for 
all the veterans in the room here who served in the military. Thank you for your service, certainly coming off of yesterday's Memorial Day uh, service out there at Bay Pines. And also thank you so much to this group. You guys single-handedly got the governor to veto uh, that whole uh, light rail project thing, which was just, I couldn't believe that that actually made it off the drawing board, made it into the committees up there in Tallahassee, got approved. Uh, well, you all know the story. But uh, so this group was, you know, obviously the, the hard work of everybody here is what got that done. So that was a lot of fun actually going out there and, and waving signs, you know, doing the, the, you know, stop the tracks and all that, uh, or the, the no tax for tracks project. It was really cool going out there and, and chatting with the voters uh, or chat, you know, talking to this one couple on a motorcycle and they pulled over and the guy pointed at the sign I was holding. And he's like, I thought the governor got rid of that two years ago. I was like, no, no, it's coming back. Because, of course, we all know how these rail people are. They're, it's almost like, you know, they, they didn't give up on the light rail or the statewide, the high-speed rail. They, you know, brought it to Hill, Hillsboro, brought it to Pinellas. It's almost like one of those science fiction movies where they send a robot back from the future. And you can sit there and beat them up and... You know, throw them in a molten lava and everything else you can come up with, and they'll send another one back. So it'll keep coming back, but you know, thanks to group everybody here uh, for all that and, and getting rid of that. So I'm to the right of Attila the Hun. I should use my right hand when I motion like that. <laughs> Left on camera, right, right there, everybody else. So uh, let's see, I will vote against, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected by the voters as state rep, I will vote against all tax increases, period. And I'll actually read all the bills. So I know there's a whole bunch of them that, that get pushed up there. So I'll probably be voting no quite a bit. So I'll, I promise everybody I will vote no on any and all tax increases. As a matter of fact, do y'all remember the summer of 2006 when the governor's race was going on back then? That was um, Charlie Chris versus uh, Jim Davis. Uh, hard to tell the difference at, at the end of the day these, these days, but do you remember there was a $6 billion surplus that year? That's hard to believe, and that's at the state level because the state budget right now is about $70 billion. It's hard to believe that, that it was in the, in the surplus back then. So I'm sitting there saying, well, six plus six billion, where did all that money go? Because you know we've been running deficits ever since then, more or less. But obviously the tax revenue has gone way down. So that's the challenge. So that's that's why that's a big reason why I'm running this year is because I've got the the time flexibility with my schedule, being a freelancer wearing you know all, all these different hats. Uh, I've got the time flexibility to be able to run, to be able to go and park myself up in Tallahassee for two solid months, because uh, I know a lot of folks can't do that, and go up there and just sit there and say, let's, let's rethink this. You know, let's look at the budget, let's sit here and just slash, slash out all the, there's so, much, there's so much waste and inefficiency with that. You got 140,000 state employees the state of Florida, 140,000 state employees. Imagine how many paper clips they go through. <laughs> and if you can save three cents on a box of paper clips times 140,000 people using all those things, that's a lot of money. But we'll get into the details as we do these, uh, the questions and answers. Oops, don't want to be getting, uh, <laughs> getting zapped here with, with our remote control. Okay, great. Well, I wanted to wrap up before I get the 10 minute uh, 10 minute chain here. So you want to jump into that's, questions? That's great, Jim. Okay. That's great. And the questions, as you already know, will be two minutes and uh, you'll get a, a little reminder just before the end, but they're two minutes each, not group participation. You just answer the questions and we'll go from there. Okay, great. Okay, first question. Yes. Sharia law. Oh, no, definitely no. Will, <laughs> will, will you support a law that limits Florida legislation and judicial review to only consider U.S. and Florida law. And please explain your view. Yes, absolutely. I can't even believe that this is something that we're talking about, but we obviously have to because of what's, you know, what we're seeing going on. But, you know, not to say that some of my best friends are Muslims. Uh, 
I don't, well, actually, I do know two or three folks who are Muslims, but they're the nice kind, uh, not the kind that, you know, fly airplanes into buildings. But in terms of, I can't even believe that, that we're looking at any religion's law, like Sharia law or anybody else's. I mean, this is the United States of America. We should be following the U.S. Constitution and in Florida, obviously, the Florida Constitution. So I would absolutely support uh, a, a state bill and anything else for that matter. And, and I totally oppose any kind, of, uh, any kind of interpretation or pulling Sharia law in. So the, the three Muslims that I do know, two of them are from Chechnya. And they got out of there before they got killed you know, by the, uh, I guess it's the Russians over there that they're having problems with. OK, In great. Chechnya, that's a, uh, great. OK, so second question. Do you believe that environmental regulations are becoming burdensome, burdensome and hindering growth, or are more regulations needed to protect the environment? The, yeah, we're way, this country and Florida and everybody else, we are, ray, we are way over-regulated on all fronts, uh, particularly environmental. So, uh, you know, if, if you look at all the hoops uh, that you have to jump through, matter of fact, I was, I was down at the Manatee Tea Party uh, about a month and a half ago. Uh, really cool people, and they have it at a place called the Mixum, Mixon, with an M, not Nixon, but Mixum uh, Fruit Farms down there. And the owners were taught, you know, they do orange groves and all that kind of stuff and processing. And the owners were telling this, uh, just this horror story of what they have to go through and what they have to deal with as far as the federal EPA and regulations and all that, just to be able to grow fruit, process it and all that. And they, they decided that their own orchards, it was too difficult to do that. So they started selling their oranges to somebody else and they buy oranges that go through a different regulatory process from somebody over on the East Coast. Isn't that ridiculous? So it was just, uh, so to, to answer your question, way too many regulations. So. It's clear, clear. Okay. Third question, do you support legislation placing all new state employees in defined benefit pension plan? You gotta do something about the pension. Uh, situation with the uh, with the state and the state employees obviously the ones the old ones who've been around not necessarily old by age uh, the uh, but the the one the pre-existing let me back that up the employee the state employees who were on the old plans whatever was negotiated with them you know gotta get, we gotta hold our end of the bargain to that so whether or not it was a good bargain or a bargain that should have been entered into, most of the time probably not, got to hold up that end of the bargain. As far as the uh, new employees that are coming in, got to totally rethink what we're doing. So, because it, it's just not sustainable, uh, not to use that horrible word, but we don't want to use, we don't want to have a situation where we can't pay for stuff. You know, that, that's kind of how we got into the problems right now. If, if tax revenues have dropped, to where they were roughly in 2002, then we need to roll our spending back to that point. But we can't sustain all this. So. Got it. Got it.